Hi friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. My name is Jake, and today we're taking a look at another knife by Best Tech. Uh, Best Tech, a brand we haven't looked at recently for a while. Uh, hopefully I can get more Best Tech knives in the near future. Uh, but this is the Texel, and uh, it's got a designer that I've not reviewed any knife of before. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a look at that. We've got a little bit of a sheet foot style blade, G10 handle scales, D2 steel, and it's a flipper. And it's a little bit on the smaller side. It's not small, but uh, smaller than a number of the knives that I've been reviewing. Excuse me. Smaller than the knives I've been reviewing recently. So if you're interested, stick around. The uh, full review is coming to you right now. Okay, so the model number for this is BG21, and then it's got a designation A, B, C, or D, depending on what color the handle is. And it comes in several colors. You can get black, uh, you can get yellow, uh, you can get this orange, and there is translucent. There's a sort of aqua translucent kind of. And they come either like this or with the flats here uh, made with black wash instead of stone wash. A little bit about the size comparison. I almost forgot to do that. Let's align these uh, pivot pins. So as you can see, it's a smaller knife than an Ontario Rat 1, but the Ontario Rat 1 is a big knife. Uh, the cutting edge is somewhat similar. You know, if you line them up at the base here, it's not really that much bigger. But the Ontario Rat's got a bigger handle to be sure. My hands are between large and extra large in Western sizes, between 10 and 11 in European men's glove sizes. So for me, this knife, it just fits. If uh, my hands were bigger, I might complain about the size of it, but it just fits. So anybody with, I guess, large, medium, small men's hands in that range there, you're going to find this knife quite comfortable. We've got a big uh, sharpness toil. It's not really a forward toil, it's just a sharpness toil. Uh, we've got a nice saber grind here, a swedge across the top, but the steel retains its full thickness all the way up to there, where the uh, sheep's foot end starts coming down. So that means it's a strong blade, and with this sheep's foot here, it's got a strong tip as well. And yet it's a decent slicer because, you know, the depth of the grind here, the main bevel, goes quite far before you get to the edge. It's not like really sheep like steep like a um, Scandi grind. So that's a good thing. It says right there D2 steel. And that's Rockwell around 60, which is quite hard. Uh, the G10, we've got your typical best bet, best, best tech, not best bet. This might be your best bet, I don't know. Uh, your best tech logo right there, or I think that's supposed to be a B and not an 8. And it's T8 screw here to take it apart. And then these are T6s back here. We've got gray G10 for your back spacer slash lanyard hole. Small back spacer to be sure. The knife is skeletonized and I'll show you the insides of it in just a little while. We've got ball bearings. We've got a ceramic detent that you can see right there. I suspect the ball bearings are ceramic as well. I've not taken this apart yet. Works well uh, left-handed or right-handed to deploy this blade. Uh, the flipper works well. The flipper's got a little bit of jimping on it. Uh, the liner release has also got a little bit of jimping on the top, and there's a nice cutaway here to get at it. So that works very well. They even had to reduce the thickness of the liner right here in order to make the uh, lock bar arm get its spring tension properly. So they could have made the liners a little bit thinner, I think, and it would still be strong. But they skeletonize it so much that it keeps it from being a heavy knife anyways. We've got flat sides, and then we've got the convex kind of chamfering uh, on both kind of edges here. It's actually a very comfortable knife in hand. Pocket clip. I wish it was a you know, fold-over pocket clip, because I really like those. Uh, but this isn't terrible. You've got less than an inch of the knife sticking out. Uh, I'll show you on my measuring tape. You know, Right there is where it comes up. So five eighths or so, you know, 
a centimeter and a half sticking out of your pocket. Now, it's not very bad sticking out of your pocket either, because once it goes in all the way to the bottom, that's all you have sticking out. Now, the orange might be quite visible, the yellow might be quite visible, but, you know, you can get the black G10 if you want to. But then it might show off because the black G10's got red backspacer. The rest all have this gray backspacer. So it's kind of interesting. I don't mind that at all. The screws there actually provide another grip to help pull the knife out. If you want a knife that is, you know, secret, very discreet, this might not be the best one for you for that reason. I do wish they would have made it the pocket clip right and left uh, attachable. I, I often use these knives on the left side and I have no problem with that, uh, but a lot of lefties would prefer a lefty pocket clip. But since the pocket clip is on sort of, uh, it's not a straight pocket clip, it's got a curve to it. If we put it on this side, it's going to curve the wrong way. It's going to curve to point out that way. So that uh, just is what it is. You can't do much about that. Uh, here, I'll show you using a straight edge. Here's uh, that straight edge on this. So as you can see, you know, if it sits there, it can rock a long ways. So the curve is kind of hard to see sometimes, but there is a curve on the same angle that the inside and the back of the handle is done to. Okay, so now let's take this thing apart and take a look at the insides. And so there you go. The uh, Where did they fall to? They fell out. My ball bearings fell out. Here's a uh, bronze cage with ceramic ball bearings. And on the other side, they might have fallen to the floor already. Oh no, here they are. They just went off screen. So you've got a cutout in here for them to sit in there. And, uh, you know, I just got to clean that up a little bit. But that made very well. Nice detent hole skeletonizing here and some skeletonizing back here and very simple and they made it so that this is not free spinning it's got that flat side to it so that is good it moves it moves a fair bit distance from there to there let's focus up here a little bit if you have one of these and you're loosening it up and you notice it start to move It'll only move, you know, a certain distance. It doesn't rotate all the way. I wish they would have made that to a little bit higher tolerances so it wouldn't move as much. But, yeah, it's not terrible or anything. So that's all there is to it. Time to clean it up, put it back together, and do the rest of the review. Well, now, before I go over all the dimensions and everything, let's talk about performance. Those ceramic ball bearings are nice and small and very efficient. They work very well. Uh, one thing I didn't mention when I had it apart is uh, it's you have to be very precise when you put it back together to line up those ball bearings because um, they sit in a groove that's milled into the blade, but they're very free on the liner side. So they could move off to the side and you could get them sort of pinched sideways. So just make sure you get them lined up properly. Action's great, very smooth, flies open when you want it to. The detent is wonderful. Holds it closed when you want it closed, not hard to open it. Uh, light switch method works fine. Pushing straight down works fine. It's great deployment. Lockup is exactly what you want to see on a brand new knife. Lots of room to wear over, yet full contact. Blade alignment when it's closed. <laughs> to the naked eye, that's perfect. Uh, we'll see what it looks like with a microscope in this picture right now. Comfort in the hand. Many kinds of grips are very comfortable, even reverse grip. Uh, you've got that inset for the lanyard I mentioned before. It's a well-performing knife that cuts quite well, and it's you know a good EDC carry. In my opinion, the style for this is definitely EDC. Uh, let's go over all of the, the dimensions and specs and that kind of information on this knife. Like we said, D2 steel, Rockwell's around 60. It's a sheep foot style with ball bearings, no blade play, nice flipper. It weighs 101 grams, which is 3.55 ounces, nice and light, even for its size. The uh, factory sharpness was measured at 165 bests. I measure it three times and take an average. Uh, so it cuts quite well, and I try to measure it at you know slightly different spots 
right around, you know, sort of the inch mark up from the sharpness twill, because that's where we cut the most. So that's where I like to measure it. The length of the cutting edge is 8.06 centimeters, 3.17 inches. The length of the blade tip to the closest spot on the G10 is 8.25 centimeters, three and a quarter inches. So it is over three inches if you live in a jurisdiction where three inches is the max. So unfortunately, it's over by a quarter of an inch. So, oh, well, sorry about that. Uh, the blade thickness is 3.2 millimeters. That's 0.126 of an inch. So just a hair over an eighth. The blade depth, this measurement here, about an inch up, 2.38 centimeters, 0.938 of an inch. And the thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.47 millimeters, which is 18 and a half thousandths of an inch. So nice and thin behind the grind. I like that. Uh, the grind angle that it's sharpened to, let's see if I get this right. This side here, 20.7 degrees. This side, 24.1 degrees. So not terrible at all. Not superb, but not bad. I think I'll sharpen this knife to, you know, maybe... 20, maybe 19, maybe even 18 and a half degrees per side the first time it needs sharpening. We'll see. Uh, the handle now, the handle length is 10.9 centimeters, 4.29 inches. The grip area, and this is more rough of a measurement, about 9 centimeters, about 3.55 inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.38 centimeters. That's 0.541 of an inch, so nice thickness. The handle depth it's actually biggest right here, where most knives are, actually most folders. Uh, not counting the flipper tab, but just the G10. 2.74 centimeters, that's uh, 1.08 inches. And uh, when the knife is closed, uh, the biggest measurement is actually back here. And that is 3.1 centimeters, 1.22 inches. And the total length of this knife, when the blade's deployed, tipped to the last spot here on the handle, almost exactly 20 centimeters, 7.87 .7 inches. So not bad for the size, uh, the weight and everything. The balance point is right there, exactly where you want it to be with that big, nice finger twirl. And uh, how much is this knife going to set you back? Well, Best Tech, most of these G10 knives, they retail at $52. I've got mine from White Mountain Knives. If you buy it there and use coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge, you're going to pay $46.80 US for this knife. So that's a good price. That's the best price I can find anywhere. That's roughly 65 Canadian, about 42 in euros, and about 38 in British pounds. But in Europe, you have to pay the VAT. So you can find this knife also at uh, knivesandtools.com. 65 euros, 58 British pounds. So I'll have links down below for uh, White Mountain Knives, uh, Amazon, and... Um, for my friends in Europe and in the UK, even the Knives and Tools link, even though I get nothing from Knives and Tools. I do get a uh, commission from Amazon, from all sales on Amazon Canada, Amazon USA, and Amazon Germany. That's .ca.com and .de. So thanks for using my links, and um, thanks for supporting White Mountain Knives as well when you shop. Unique features about this knife. Not an awful lot is really unique. Um, it might be a little bit unique that the black one's got a nice red backspacer, a little accent that sort of sticks out. I think that's kind of cool. Oh, I put this backspacer in the wrong way when I put it back together. It's not supposed to stick out like that, so I'll have to take it apart and switch it back around. <laughs> uh, but it's not a, there's nothing really special about this knife. It's just a nice, well-made knife. Even at the edge where the jimping is here, there's a slight chamfer on the side. And there's a chamfer right here. Everywhere on the edges where it's not supposed to be sharp, it's not sharp. It feels really, really good. Oh, by the way, the designer, here's the logo, says AP. I like this knife. Good skeletonizing, easy to flip, easy lock release, good alignment, good uh, tolerances. It's well made, good sharpness twirl, non-spinning pivot pin, you know, good quality screws. Things that I don't like, well, I wish there was a left-hand pocket clip. That would be a good thing. And um, I do wonder sometimes, why not just make this knife at 2.99 inches long in the blade? You know, that quarter of an inch that you get, how much is a quarter of an inch? 
Where's the measuring tape? If it was a quarter of an inch shorter, it would be that much shorter. That's all that you would take off, right where that black is. So you just take off that tiny little bit of a tip of the knife. And now it would be legal for a lot of places. So I wish more of the Chinese brands uh, on the knives that they make that's really close to three inches. Why not consider making them, you know, just a hair under three inches? Because there's a number of states in the United States and there's another countries in Europe and stuff where there's, you know, rules about that. I think three inches is about 7.6 centimeters. I, I don't know exactly. But make it just, make some just under that for those fine people who need those smaller knives to be able to carry legally. But that's enough for this knife. There's so many pros. It well outweighs the cons. And the price, you can get it $46.80 United States money. Not bad at all. Uh, except for the Canadian dollar is doing quite poorly right now <laughs> comparatively. But uh, still, it's cheaper to buy from there, from the United States, than it is to buy Canadian right now. So thank you so much for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always, don't use that as a finger choil. <laughs> and remember to cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.